Hello friends, uh, my name is Popeye. Uh, thank you for joining me today. We're going to be playing some Steins Gate. Uh, this is a game which I have uh, watched the anime of. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and today I'm going to be playing it out. Um, I won't go too much into detail, but it's a visual novel that has a series of choices that will affect the ending. I'm not quite sure how many different endings there are, and I don't want to spoil myself by finding that out. Uh, but I do know that there's one good ending. Hopefully we get it, but with these types of games, I find that's never the case on the first playthrough. So, yeah, let's dive right in. すべては偶然だ。だがその偶然は荒くじめ決められていた世界の意志でもあった。俺は行かれてなどいない。至って正常だ。ここでは真実を語っているんであって、断じて中二病の妄想なんかじゃない。きっかけは、ほんの些細な
Despite the imminent risk of death, there is no hint of tension on her innocent, childlike features. I cover my phone's mouthpiece and turn to the girl with an index finger to my lips. I nod and put my phone back to my ear. Still no sound from the other side. My contact is wise to maintain silence. The whole area could be bugged. Still, no reply. Looks like they just want my report. It's too dangerous to waste time talking here anyway. I love when games like this have cheesy names like the organization. I open my eyes wide to match my shocked tone. The girl turns towards me in surprise. I sigh, shaking my head as I rub my temples. I speak the parting words, then pocket my cell phone. Stein's Gate. Some know it is fate, to others it is the will of God. You could count on one hand the people in this world aware of its true nature. In any case, we should begin the infiltration. I advance towards Radi Khan, which is just across the street from the train station. Of course, this is enemy territory. I can't just stride through the front door like an average person. I bypass the elevators and escalators and head to the eighth floor by the stairwell. Hey, co gamer, how's it going? But I only make it to the seventh floor before I have to stop and rest. <laughs> The girl, Shina Mayuri, immediately resumes our conversation. She followed me all the way here, and she isn't even short of breath. I, on the other hand, am gasping for air, with my hands on my knees. Who would have thought an eight-story building would be so tall? I'm doing quite well. Thank you for asking, my friend. I turn to Mayuri while wiping the sweat off my brow. Kikuna. That's the face of... Oh, that's nice, dear. Mayuri smiles happily and doesn't pry any further. As always, she's quick to understand my position. Or uh, humorous, I think, is more likely. We've known each other since we were both little. Miri is 16, two years younger than me, so she's more like a little sister than a typical childhood friend. I've been looking out for her as, for as long as I can remember. <laughs> two tours already happening in chat, love it. <laughs> I used to hope that Miri might become the key to Stein's Gate, but now I've reconsidered. I don't want that terrible fate for her, she should live a normal life. That is my present wish. Awkward zoom into staircase. We continue to the eighth floor and enter the assembly hall. In front of us stands a cheap looking stage with a podium and sign reading Dr. Nakabachi's Time Machine Press Conference. My re insists on calling me Okarin, but it's neither my real name nor my code name, just one of those annoying nicknames people use. I don't think that's going to work anymore. <laughs> uh, I don't think she's going to stop anytime soon. ハハハハハ。<laughs> Wonderful laugh. 
In any case, Hoen Kiyoma is my true name. Uh, you missed you miss the first part. It's El Sai Kongru. But yes. <laughs> I see you are a man or woman, because I don't know that, who also knows the true nature of Stein's Gate. Cease your foolish laughter. Akabe Rintaro may be my real name, but I have rejected it, for it is stupid. I'm sure parents love hearing that. <laughs> The name they gave their kids is stupid. <laughs> and so, I also hate the derivative Ocarine. Yeah, same. It's been a long time since I've watched this anime. They they had a newer one that came out. Was that Steins Gate Zero that came out maybe a year and a half or two years ago? That's the last time I remember watching it. Yes, I agree. The, the anime is probably... If not in my top 5, it's definitely in my top 10, that's for sure. Come on, it sounds like that elf boy's blue pipe thing. An ocarina. <laughs> in one ear and out the other. She's been calling me that for 5 years now, so maybe it's time to give up. I, I think it's time to give up, friend. <laughs> She nods without dropping her smile. We're standing in the assembly hall on the 8th floor of Roddy Khan. It is here that the conference will be held. Dr. Nakabachi is an inventor. He appears on TV from time to time and has a few patents under his belt. But mostly, he's treated as a curiosity. Mayuri is right. I've scanned the entire hall. There's no one who looks like a reputable reporter or cameraman. In fact, doesn't look like anyone's here at all, actually. There are only about ten of us standing in the hall, including me. So we're all just standing at the back, I guess? Considering Nakabachi's moderate media presence and the fact that he claims to have invented a time machine, I would have expected more. I twist my lips into a sneer. I thought that Nakabachi was like me, a scientist fighting to overthrow the organization. But this press conference suggests other motives at work. Our enemies won't miss this chance. Nevertheless, I'm interested in what he has to say. That's why I'm here, blowing an afternoon of my precious summer holiday. Mayuri ponders my utterance for a while before finally turning her head. I let out a sigh. Mayuri is known to not only make bad jokes, but to laugh at them too. She's always been special. I didn't even finish my sentence. Are we under attack? Are they trying to fry our brains with electromagnetic waves? Dust falls from the ceiling as the floor shakes. We're definitely under attack. It's coming from above, but we're on the top floor. All that's above is the roof. I don't think it's the time to be pondering what a magnitude earthquake means. No time to deal with Mayuri's confusion. Something's not right about this. I bolt out of the conference hall and run up the stairs to the roof, ignoring the no trespassing signs in my way. The door is open. Upon closer inspection, I realize that the lock has been broken. 
I open the door and see a billowing cloud of black smoke. There's some kind of phosphorescent dust sparkling in the air. I can't believe it. Is there really an explosion? My heart is racing. Damn, I don't know what to do. Should I run away? But why an explosion? Terrorists? No, that doesn't fit. I mean, how do you explain that? A strange machine is sitting in the middle of the roof. It's huge, maybe three meters tall. Looks kind of like a satellite. Did that thing cause the shaking just now? Who put it here? Is it no Dr. Nakabachi? Is this part of his presentation? Impossible. Even if that were the case, how the hell would he get it up here? My head is bursting with questions. As I search for the courage to approach the machine, a throng of reporters and building staff bursts onto the rooftop. They look just as confused as I am. And then, a woman, who I assume is a staff member, appears to wave us back. Is she trying to hide something? Her response was unusually quick, almost like she's trying to keep me away from that device. I want to know, but I shouldn't risk getting any closer. I turn and leave. But not because I'm scared or anything like that. Sure, sure. Staff members lead us lead all of us back to the eighth floor. Mayuri is nowhere to be seen. She's not in the event hall either. I find her on the seventh floor. Several capsule toy machines are lined up next to a plate reading Birthplace of the Japanese PC. She's gazing upon them with a wistful look. I breathe a sigh of relief, then take out my phone. After I speak the words and hang up, I am able to wipe the sweat from my forehead. My sweat is cold. Half of me hopes something will happen. The other half fear is the same thing. Put away my phone and look back at my Yuri. She's still staring at those capsule toys. She doesn't seem to be worried about the explosion at all. I can't decide if she's level headed or just air headed. My Yuri, what you doing? <laughs> what is this change in tone? <laughs> Just as I thought. Mayuri points to a capsule machine. A sign on the front says, Raynet Kakeru 3D Character Doll Series. Raynet Kakeru is a popular anime series with its own card game spin-off, Railnet Access Battlers. They even hold international tournaments. Upa is the series' mascot character. It resembles an elliptical egg with limbs sticking out. Like some kind of deformed dog. <laughs> it's what they call an ugly cute character. High school girls find these creatures adorable for some reason. Last year an ugly frog character was the rage. Its name escapes me though. <laughs> Mayuri gives me a troubled smile. Mayushi is what Mayuri calls herself sometimes. According to her, it's supposed to have a star at the end. Mayushi star. <laughs> but who really cares? <laughs> She holds her hands out for, with a look like a begging puppy. She looks like she was planning this from the very beginning. Well, at least she didn't say gimme. 
<laughs> Jeez. I pull out a hundred yen coin, set it into the machine slot, and spin the lever. I open the capsule and take out the con the contents. Mayuri leans forward eagerly to see what I got. While I examine the metal Upa, a boy who is watching us tries his luck on the same Rynet machine. He looks at my metal Upa in resentment. I turn to see Mayuri's sparkling eyes also fixed on the Upa. Hey, high school girl, you're acting like a little kid. I mean, she's 16. Still kind of a kid. <laughs> this metal creature. <laughs> Honestly, I don't want it. <laughs> she completely ignores his request for his name change. <clears throat> She doing it on purpose. Jeez, that's a loud press conference. If you can hear it like halfway down the stairwell, I hear the announcement from the floor above. Hey, Chaos, how's it going? I head to the stairs, but Mayuri doesn't follow. <laughs> so we pan he back down the Mayuri. stairs. <laughs> I'm doing pretty well. Thank you for asking. She's preoccupied with the metal upa. I go on ahead. Oh, we actually have people in the room now. Dr. Nakabachi enters to sparse applause. He walks up to the podium. He's already wearing a frown. For some reason, I can feel his irritation from here. Dr. Nakabachi, please. Nakabachi takes the microphone and begins to speak, his voice brimming with confidence. Yes, ma'am, there are moving lips. Mayuri appears after writing her name on the metal upa. She's a bit late, in more ways than one. What did you think a time machine presentation would be about? I take another look around the room. There are about 20 people now, including us, but still no media presence to speak of. So this is the extent of Dr. Nakabachi's fame. No one believes that he invented a time machine. I was interested in what he had to say, true, but my expectations were no higher than the rest of the onlookers. And a good thing they weren't, as he proceeds to explain his time machine design, my curiosity quickly turns to disappointment, then anger. <laughs> this can only end well. My roar silences Nakabachi and draws the eye of every person in the room. <laughs> なんだね君は。俺が誰なのかはどうでもいい。それより今あなたが語った<笑> 
出ていくのはあなただドクター恥を知れ本人罪あなたには発明家を名乗る資格はないぞうるさい黙れ生意気な若造め Just then, someone grabs my arm from behind. Quite convinced it's an official here to throw me out. I turn around to glare him down. It's a girl, about my age. Her intense stare seems to challenge me. I take a step back. Her face looks somehow familiar. Where have I seen her before? We haven't met, but I know her face. It's Makise Kurisu. A few days ago, my friend Daru showed me a magazine article titled Girl Genius Gives Lecture in Akihabara. The article was about a 17 year old girl who had just graduated from an American university. Her thesis was even published in a major scientific journal. Girl Genius, Makise Kurisu. I recognize the stubborn looking girl from her photograph. She's even wearing the exact same scowl. <laughs> What business could such a genius have with me? She takes a quick look around the room and turns back to me with a stern expression. What's with the attitude? She's obviously not staff. There's no way that the Makise Kurisu would be working with someone like Dr. Nakabachi. Which means. no. My outburst has already attracted too much attention. Nakabachi, in particular, looks like he wants to rip my head off. It must be mortifying to be exposed as a fraud by a bright young man like myself. <laughs> Basically, Mim, yes. <laughs> Anyways, I mustn't draw any more attention to myself. The organization gets wind of my presence here, it can endanger my Yuri, to say nothing of these ignorant civilians. I let Makise Kurisu lead me out of the assembly hall. She glares at me quite fiercely at that. Attractive though she may be, there is no innocence in her eyes. A beautiful agent. Unmatched in cruelty. My heart beats in exhilaration from the danger. Looks like chaos really does get my blood pumping. You hear that, chaos? <laughs> I'm just reading the text. <laughs> Instead of answering, I take up my phone and put it to my ear. <laughs> Chris suddenly snatches the phone from my hand. What skill? I didn't have time to react. <laughs> Her eyes pierce deep into my soul. I quickly look away. She's good. She trying to attack my sense of identity in order to cause a mental break? Recover. This isn't enough to sway me. Kisama, 
<laughs> Such measures are necessary to maintain secrecy. I know things that could get me killed. I quickly re retrieve my phone and wipe the cold sweat off my forehead. Whew, that was close. <laughs> this is bad. Ordinary methods don't work in Makise Kurisu, the genius girl. On the contrary, she's the one psyching me out. Damn, looks like I'll have to make a tactical retreat. If I can just find an opening. Suddenly, Kurisu steps up to me with a serious expression. She stares right at me, her huge eyes blazing with the strength of will. Such fire. I can't look away. Could someone with such pure eyes really be an organization agent? Hey, Funky, how's it going? Earlier? Nonsense. This is the first time we've met. I was with Mayuri in that Upatoy 15 minutes ago. Is this a trap? It does seem like one of the organization's dirty tricks. But would this girl do something that underhanded? <laughs> You're eating pizza at 2 a.m.? That sounds like a fantastic thing. I don't know what it is, but the later the night goes on, it always means pizza tastes better to me. She seems sincere. That makes her even more suspicious. She also has alcohol. This is very true. If if ever I have wine, afterwards I always want pizza. I don't know why, but that is the food I crave after wine. <laughs> That's right. Don't let her beauty fool you. She's a cold, calculating secret agent. If I show the slightest vulnerability, I'm done for. <laughs> I am a mad scientist, after all. I spin around and take off down the stairs, ignoring her call to stop, like I'd listen to the enemy. I love how he only makes it to the fourth floor before he's like, I guess I'm safe now. I run all the way down to the fourth floor and check behind me. Once I'm convinced Makise Krisu is not tailing me, I sigh while rubbing my temples. Well then, what do I do now? My mission was to attend the conference and evaluate Dr. Nakabachi's research. Now that I know he's a fraud, there's no real point in going back. I guess I'll just go home. But wait, aren't I forgetting something important? Let's see now, what is it? I knew she'd be a liability. <laughs> I shouldn't have brought her along. I was trying to prioritize her safety, but got careless. I'll try calling her first. If she's alright, then I could just have her meet me here. With that thought in mind, I take out my phone, I turn it on. And it rings, just as I do. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. It's not just a regular email. There's a video attached and a very sketchy looking address. And it's from an unknown address. I open the video file with some trepidation. Hmm. 
There's nothing but noise. Is this a prank? Some sort of Makise Krisu style attack? Maybe the noise is some s sort of make people go crazy frequency. I, th I think you're safe if it makes people go crazy. We're already at that limit. No, wait. I don't remember giving her my mail address. I'm probably just thinking too hard. I curse myself for being gullible enough to play the video. I have more pressing matters to deal with anyway. Address book of all of five people and one just phone wave. I stop the video and call Mayuri's phone from my address book. Mayuri, why did I? Looks like I'll have to go back to the assembly hall. But things will get messy if I bump heads with Makise Kurisu again. <gasps> Leaving without Mayuri isn't an option. Call me overprotective, but she's like a little sister to me. There's a very real danger that she might wander off somewhere the moment I let her out of my sight. Mayuri has always been like that. I never know if she'll be there when I turn to look. In a sense, that's why I became Hoen Kyoma. The thought of climbing back up to the 8th floor is depressing, but I have no choice. When I get back to the assembly hall, Dr. Nakabachi's conference has just finished. Nobody's on stage, and the phony inventor has already left. The twenty or so members of the audience are starting to pack up. I soon find Mayuri. She's in the corner, looking lost. Well, at least she wasn't kidnapped. Even better, I don't see Makise Krisu anywhere. <laughs> Still, I keep my eyes peeled as I run up to Mayuri. Mayuri, why didn't you call me? I'm going to go back. Ah, Okari! The metal metal is not going to die. Ran away? She turns to me with a forlorn expression. Is it not going to die? Did you just move on? That's actually a fantasy. What did you do? I see, so she was looking for it. Not like it really matters. That toy was worth that much? <laughs> <laughs> Your research does not have a very big fund. Thus begins our search for the metal Upa. Thank you for the lurk, in indecisive fox. Glad you could make it. Myri tries calling its name. I don't know if she truly expects a response. By the way, Tutu is Myri's catchphrase, because everyone needs a catchphrase. It means. Actually, I've never bothered to ask what it means. Hey, Samuses, how's it going? Anyway, the metal Upa is nowhere to be found. Maybe she didn't drop it in the assembly hall, but on the seventh floor landing near the capsule toy machines. I feel you. I woke up today feeling like, man, I should go back to sleep. And then I didn't. Another possibility is that someone with an eye for rare items pilfered it. Just imagining the smug grin on that person's face makes me writhe in envy. <laughs> Honore. 
Apparently we are all on the same tired boat. <laughs> and then he attempted to make smart decisions on D&D. Yeah, this morning I woke up, I checked to see if, um... If Funky, if your, uh, special stream was still on. Fortunately it wasn't. But then I saw that Kate was on, watched her stream until I fell back asleep, and then woke up again. Wasn't expecting that from my Yuri. It's the sound I make when screaming into my pillow at night. What was that? I think so. <laughs> Only the presenter and a few other people are left in the assembly hall. Including my Yuri and me, less than half the audience remains. Everyone looks at each other anxiously, startled by the scream. Even I cannot suppress a shiver. First the explosion on the roof, now this. What's going on here? My Yuri squeezes my hand tight. I take a deep breath, prepare myself, and head in the direction of the scream. The echoes lead me down a dark, empty hallway on the same floor. Hey, JC. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't expect to have a stream today. Um, this morning, I hit 50 followers. Some Somehow amazing people follow me when I'm offline for some reason. And I decided, well, I guess that means I have to try and uh, put in some more streams and make it to affiliate. But I appreciate you coming, even though this wasn't the t the one you had your timer set for. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it came from around that corner. I crouched down and turned the corner slowly, keeping my eyes near as peeled for any sign of danger. And there, at the end of the passage, I see it. There's something on the ground. No, someone. Motionless. <laughs> you have that timer and you check Twitch every hour? That is impressive, my friend. I appreciate the lengths you would go to to support people. The clothes are familiar. It can't be. Well, flashing warning. <laughs> Kise Kurisu. Her face is turned away, but I know it's her. The impertinent genius girl I fought with ten minutes ago. You just wait for email notifications mostly because you're so far behind on YouTube you always have things to watch? Yeah, I have like my to watch list on YouTube just grows and grows. Um, for the most part I actually don't have Twitch notifications on for people, just uh, when I'm on my computer or like working and want something in the background I just check and see who's online at that point in time uh, but if people like post in a discord or something that they're gonna be online I try and uh, open it up at the very least is now face down in a pool of bright red blood she's dead <laughs> Suddenly, I realize that I'm shaking. I want to run. Run away. I shouldn't have come. This is wrong. Someone killed Makise Krisu. There's no other explanation. Who would do such a thing? There's no one else here. <laughs> I twist around in shock. Some other men have followed me. And every one of them is ghastly pale. They must have seen the body. The man cries out in panic. At this, everyone else starts screaming and running away. You are very true. This sounds like the Ace Attorney game. <laughs> Start from the perspective of the defendant. That is absolutely true. I follow them, of course. There's absolutely no reason to stay here. Conserved from Akise Krisu is superseded by my instinctive urge to flee. 
When I get back to the assembly hall, Mayuri is waiting for me with tears in her eyes. I grab Mayuri's hand and run. I race down the stairs, trying to drive the image of Kurisu's dead body from my mind. But I can't. The redness of her blood is burned into my mind, more than the sight of the body itself. That was my first time seeing a dead body. Is this what it's like? When I realized that she was dead, I felt chilling terror and a surge of nausea. That was all I felt, fear and disgust. Shouldn't there be something more? I guess I just didn't know her that well. I finally stop once we get out into the main street, Chudori. My chest pounds, my breathing labored from running down the stairs at full speed. Mayuri doesn't seem to comprehend the situation. I guess it's because she didn't see the body. She's not even breathing hard. She looks slow, but she's actually pretty fast on her feet. I take several deep breaths. The color of that blood still stains my brain. But I've calmed down a bit. Kize Krisu is dead. And I don't know who the killer is. Sirens in the distance. I guess an ambulance will be here soon. Then the police will arrive. And this area will become a crime scene. But for now, the crowds milling through Akihabara have no idea what has happened. Everyone is going about their business as usual. The never-ending search for electronics, moe, and porn. Just another day in Akihabara. I take my phone out of my pocket, perhaps out of reflex. I'm not sure what I plan to do with it. Oh, I know. My friend Daru. I'll tell him what happened just now, since he knows about M Makise Kurisu. Suppose it might be disrespectful to the victim. But my adrenaline is pumping. I can't make calm decisions after witnessing something like that firsthand. That's how humans are, after all. We're not as special as we like to believe. At the end of the day, we're nothing but dirty, slime-like flesh. Our souls fester like semen left to rot in the womb. These are very colorful descriptions. That's how we humans are. While wallowing in a bit of angst, I begin to type on my phone. Someone stabbed Makise Kurisu. Don't know who. Looked bad. Hope she's okay. I don't know if she was stabbed. That just seems like the most logical explanation, given the amount of blood and the absence of a gunshot. On the other hand, I didn't write that she was dead, even though I'm pretty sure she was. I can't exactly explain why I didn't. If I had to say, I guess I felt like writing it down would set it in stone. Might make me feel guilty as well. The thought brings a smirk to my face. It's not like I'm the one who killed her. Why should I feel guilty? I just saw someone's death up close, and only a few minutes later I'm smiling. Am I really that cruel and cold? Well, I am a fiendish mad scientist, so it suits me. I finish typing and place my thumb over the send button. And then... I press down. Sending... He really needs to see that this is sent, apparently. What was that? Wait, look around. First of all, why were you sending that text, like, literally in the middle of the street? 
Summer break. Noon. The busiest street in town. Just now, thousands of pedestrians vanished into thin air. Is this a dream? Am I hallucinating? I don't know. But they're gone. I saw them vanish with my own two eyes. I stand petrified, speechless, and alone on the empty street. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I appreciate that, and have fun with your son. Family is by far more important than my stream. Desperate to find someone, anyone, I look up. And there, at the top of Roddy Khan. Sticking out from the 8th floor event hall where we just were. Is a crash satellite. And now we get the opening, it looks like. Uh, the text on the screen is just a reiteration of the opening uh, line that uh, Kyoma reads out. Chapter 1 Time Travel Paranoia. Oi. So, Kono Kisama. Ore Tachika Miete Iruka. Are we breaking the fourth wall? Nanze Nani Mokotaina. Kisama Niki Tirundazo. Monita no Sochiga Niru. Kisama Nida. Yep, we're breaking the fourth wall. Wonderful. Yes, ma'am. They have openings. Um. I guess you weren't here for it, but when I did the Higurashi one, it also has an opening. Um, when I do the next stream, I think it also has the same opening. Hopefully you make it to that. If not, I can always just send you a link to it, because I have it up on uh, YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Samus says thank you for coming out, and I hope you get some good sleep. Apparently we are the ones inside the monitor. I mean, I'd love to think real life has openings like that. Mazi. 
俺たちがいるのはどこかということだここは東京秋葉原にある未来ガジェット研究所だ俺たちは普段ラーボと呼んでいる世界の支配構造を作り変えるという我が野望の拠点だなそうなんだ悪いことしちゃダメなんだよオカリン<笑>まあ入りは少し黙っていろ駅から出たら中央通りを進み数キロ町駅の交差点を蔵前橋通りへ左折次の信号の一歩手前の路地を入ると大檜山ビルという古臭い雑居ビルがあるその2階に我がラボは今日構えている目印はビル1階にあるブラウン管工房というマニアックなテナントだな今時旧式のブラウン管テレビだけを扱っているショップだいかに電気街である秋葉原といえども需要があるとは思えないさびれた店なのだだがブラウン管工房店長である天王寺というおっさんはこのビルのオーナーでもあるゆえに今野球ピッチで都市開発が進みしかも高騰しているこの秋葉原であろうと道楽丸出しの店を構えていられるというわけだ幸いにもあの店長は人を見る目はあるようでなこの俺のカリスマ性を見抜きビル2階を丸々ワンフロアただ同然で貸してくれたのだふわ<笑>だが未来ガジェット研究所は深刻な人材不足のため優秀な研究員を随時募集中だ今のところ所属研究員はオカリンオカリンそこはラボメンって言わなきゃ所属研究員じゃなくてラボメンすなわちラボラトリーメンバーは俺を含めて三人である Thanks, JC. I appreciate that. Labo men number 001. Labo s o u r c e s Chaniste. Kyokiro Mad Scientist. They are Kono Ore. Oh, in Kyoma. Okarin, the Yobikata no Hoga Kawaii. So stay. Cosprega Shimino Ko it ten. Labo men number 002. See the Mayuri. Tete, Mayashi des. 着るんじゃなくて作るのが趣味だよ最後にスーパーハカラボメンナンバー003橋田至だスーパーハカーって呼ぶなよスーパーハッカーだろ上皇そんな我々三人で構成される未来ガジェット研究所の活動内容 Thanks for that lurk, I appreciate it. 発明である詳細は我がラボのホームページを見てくれもちろん闇の支配権力と戦うための未来ガジェットが最優先事項だがその研究から派生する副産物的な発明も多いというか今のところはそっちばかりだすでに我々は8つの未来ガジェットを完成させただがこれはまだ上昇でしかない未来ガジェットのアイデアは俺の中に108まであるのだ !108 inventions and I bet you you will create none of them。某テニス漫画みたいにですね。わかります。人の煩悩の数といえ、このアットチャンネルのおめ。それと、俺が話しているのだから口出しをするなと言っているだろう。そもそもオカリン、さっきからなんで一人ごと喋ってんの一人ごとではない。見てわからないのか。俺は今、モニターの向こうにいるこいつに話しかけているのだ。あ、今その人、にやりって笑った。おのれ貴様、何を笑っているのか。モニターの中の存在のくせに。<笑>こっちみんなって言ってやれば。通じないんじゃないかな。俺たちに話しかけられていることにすら気づいていないらしいな
自覚がないというのは実に不幸なことだ。Yes, we are greatly in denial about this. その人にしてみたら、マユシーたちがゲームみたいに見えてるのかなそいつには現実なのかゲームなのかっていう発想さえないんじゃねんじゃあ、ダルコの大好きな二次元の女の子たちもそうなのそれは別。あの子たちは僕の嫁だから。<笑> Wives make it so much better. ダルの嫁の話はどうでもいい。でもさ、マユシの言ったことって興味深いテーマじゃんもし仮に僕たちがゲームの中の住人だとしたら、それを見極める術はあると思うないな。即答かよ。故に、そのような議論は不毛。世界の支配構造を打ち砕く方法について考える方がよほど有意義だ。中二病、おつ。I step back from the monitor after a very long intro. Displayed on the screen is the ugly cute character Alpaca Man. He is wonderful. This is a game called Alpaca Man 2. We speak to Alpaca Man via microphone and watch him react. Game exploded in popularity when it was released 10 years ago. Personally, I find only the ugly part of Ugly Cute to be true. I bought it yesterday. 500 yen used, headset included. I turned to Dar with a menacing glare. <laughs> I sweep my hair back and flash a devilish grin. This fat, bespectacled man is my brother in arms and right hand man, Hashida Itaru, nicknamed Daru. He's a hardcore otaku. You can always find him in front of the computer, playing games and watching anime. He has 2D wives on whom he cheats with 3D maids. I don't agree with his preferences, but to him, anything's fine as long as it's moe. He's the reliable and skilled partner who brings my ideas to fruition. Despite his insistence that software is his forte, he shows remarkable aptitude with hardware as well. <sighs> Over here, nursing a pricked finger, we have Sheena Mayuri, a 16 year old high school student, if you can believe it. I've known her since we were both small. She's also no Taku. Nowhere near Daru's level, though. This ditzy girl is in charge of the lab's official costume division for women, and today she's working with costumes at her usual leisurely pace. And she's also the only woman here, so she makes costumes for herself. Perfect. Why does the future gadget laboratory need costumes for women? It doesn't. The truth is that Mayuri is completely useless. <laughs> Still, there's no way I would ever kick her out. After all, she was the first one to join the future gadget laboratory. I still remember the day Mayuri first came to the lab. It was spring. She said to me, <laughs> So it all started with the hostage taking. Perfect. Well, that certainly was cryptic. But her offer was my salvation. For she was the first to join me on my magnificent quest. She saved me from a solitary life on the run from the organization. I will never forget her kindness. Mayuri doesn't have to be useful. Her being here is enough. De Okarin, Alpaca Man was handled. Yeah, then there. The human faced alpaca inside the monitor was completely unresponsive. So unresponsive, you'd think the game was bugged. Whatever. I give up. Never again will I play this boring game. Cool. 
I curse his name and smack the TV. As soon as I do, hmm? the TV makes a sound like it's shorted, and then the screen goes blank. I change the channel. Nothing. Check the power cable. Nothing. Whack it again. Nothing. I guess it's broken. Damn. Scrummy TV is unleashed from the brawn tube workshop downstairs. It's probably just old. <laughs> I turn off the TV and lie down on the couch. I'm fed up with the humidity of Japanese summers. I stare at a conspicuous stain on the ceiling while fanning myself. I close my eyes. What naturally comes to mind is that impossible scene I saw an hour ago. As I left Radikan, everyone vanished before my eyes. I can't explain it. And it wasn't just the people on the street. The people in the stores? Gone. And the restaurants? Gone. Even the cars vanished, drivers and all. And it all happened in the blink of an eye. Suddenly, an empty city spread before me. I could still hear the music from the stores. Those catchy melodies were the only sounds of life remaining. Heat was rising from the asphalt and waves, but I felt only a cold chill down my spine. I stood there, breathless, until... Mayuri's voice brought me back to reality. Mayuri hadn't disappeared. She was right there, looking at me with questioning eyes. Panic to cold as the enormity of what had just happened struck me. Unable to control myself, I grabbed Mayuri by her slender shoulders and shook her. That's the sound you make as you're being shook, apparently. Mayuri's head flopped back and forth from my shaking. I stopped shaking her and looked straight into her eyes. She returned my gaze, with eyes clear as glass marbles. Her reply didn't make any sense. <laughs> How could she laugh at a time like this? I always thought she was a bit strange, but maybe her brain is actually broken. I realized that she couldn't help me. With nowhere else to turn, I looked up at the bright blue sky. There wasn't a cloud in sight. The scorching summer sun shone bright through the gaps between Akiba's buildings. Naturally, my eyes drifted to the top floor of Radikan, where I had been just a moment before. There it was, an enormous machine, like some kind of satellite embedded in the roof of the building where, not five minutes before, I'd found Makise Krisu's body in a pool of blood. What happened to her? Just before everyone disappeared, I could have sworn I heard an ambulance siren. Makise Krisu might still be in that dark, narrow passageway, cold, bloody, and alone. The thought disturbed me, but the question at the forefront of my mind was, Right before Dr. Nakabachi's presentation, 
The building shook like a bomb had exploded. The roof door lock had been broken, and beyond it someone had placed a satellite-like machine shrouded in smoke and glowing dust. When I first saw it, the satellite was on the rooftop. That's not what I was seeing now. The satellite had penetrated the top floor of the building, obliterating the room where Dr. Nakabachi's press conference had been held. It must have fallen out of orbit, without burning up in the atmosphere somehow. I knew it was crazy, but what other explanation could there be? The real question was, when did that happen? Mayuri. Where did your eyebrows just come from? A huge kaplow. It certainly did make a sound. But I don't think it was kaplow. I'd say it was more like <laughs> Had I lost my mind? <laughs> yes, zzzm. <laughs> What I had seen didn't match at all with what Mayuri was saying. Suddenly, nothing seemed real. Had I dreamt it all? <laughs> Just then, a uniformed policeman ran up to his. His expression stern. <laughs> Officer A. Officer <laughs> A. I was quickly losing confidence in my own memories. I decided to tell him about Makise Kurisu and get him to call an ambulance. But before I could, the policeman took me by the upper arm and said, No one got stabbed at Radikon. What? How could he say that with such certainty? While I was still trying to comprehend the situation, the policeman forcefully led us away. We were escorted to up to UPX and released. There were people at UPX, like usual. Actually, there were far more people than usual. The place was packed. Just as Officer A had said, Chuodori had been blockaded by police, so nobody could enter. There was nothing we could do, so we headed back to the lab. And that brings us to the present. I'm baffled. Did the whole hour since the beginning of Nakabachi's presentation really happen? I checked online for any news. And that is buzzing about the mysterious machine that crashed into Radikon. All of the major stations in Tokyo, even Tou TV, are running special bulletins about it. Fortunately, it doesn't look like anyone was hurt, but Chuodori is still closed off. Akihabara Station is jammed with reporters and curious onlookers. Nobody has mentioned anything about the disappearance of thousands of people from Akiba streets, nor about Makise Krisu's murder. It's all a mystery. A mystery? So so From the sofa, I spring to my feet, a wide grin on my face. Daru and Mayuri turn and stare. これも全て機関の隠蔽工作ということだな。警察にすら圧力をかけられるということはこの国の中枢も。もはや奴らの手の内にあるということは。だが、俺の目はごまかせんぞ。いつか必ず奴らの所業を暴き、その支配構造に終止符を打ってやる。Having come to a satisfactory conclusion, I take a celebratory bottle of Dr. P. 
my favorite soda from the fridge. The lab has no air conditioning. Ice cold drinks are essential. I love how they say Dr. Pepper, but the text is just Dr. P. <laughs> Step through the curtain dividing its center, and you'll enter the heart of the future gadget laboratory, the development room. Just as the name implies, this is the room where we develop future gadgets. Needless to say, it is strictly off-limits to outsiders. Yes, I know the setup is cheap. I'd much rather have an airlock than a curtain, but our research budget is already scraping the bottom of the barrel. Besides, what's important isn't money, it's ambition. I poke Daru and bid him follow me into the development room. All of the windows here are weather-stripped with packing tape, so it's dim and hot, almost like a sauna. I've been wanting to buy an air conditioner for the lab, but there's no money for that. We're currently accepting donations. Upon entering the development room, I pick up the lab coat that's lazily draped on the chair and put it on. I always wear a lab coat in the development room, for practical reasons, as well as symbolic ones. Daro, however, refuses to wear his. Putting it on and taking it off is apparently too much trouble for him. He can't be bothered to do anything that doesn't interest him. It's men like him who give our generation a bad name. His lab coat, purchased from my own pocket money I might add, just sits on the shelf. It's never been worn and probably never will be. <laughs> Dara gives me a blank look. I sigh, and turn his attention to the table in the middle of the room. Sitting majestically on top of the table is a commercial-grade microwave oven. It's significantly larger than newer home models. I'll have to go and look at all those notes we've been gathering at some point, but I think I'll save that until uh, the end of this stream. Or until there's a point where we have to make a choice. We went to high school together, and now we're going to the same university. We share an inseparable bond, like prison cellmates. He's only been a lab member for two months, though. Awkward silence. Man, all I want to do is have one of those cool, cryptic conversations where we talk about plans and preparations and other important sounding stuff, but no one knows what it means except us. Shot down again. So far, Future Gadget Laboratory has completed a total of eight inventions. Who picked the color scheme to put blue hyperlinks on top of, like, a dark blue-black thing? That's horrible. That's just bad design. As I explained to Alpaca Man, the lab's primary goal is to develop weapons for the war against the Dark Dominion, led by the organization, that rules the world from the shadows. At present, we haven't completed any inventions of that sort. On the contrary, we haven't even figured out what we should make. But along the way, we've managed to create some ingenious future-ish gadgets as a byproduct of our research. It's a fundamental truth of science that great inventions are often created by accident. In other words, serendipity. Allow me to introduce our glorious future gadgets. Gadget number one, the bit particle gun. Gadget number two, the bamboo helicam. Gadget number three, could this be Aura Aura? <laughs> Gadget number four, Moad snake. 
Okay, I think after this, after we read all these, I'll have to go and look at all of these because this is a lot. Gadget number five. Once again, I've made a worthless object by Goemon. Gadget number six. The Silume Saber. Gadget number seven. Ghost in the Ball. They can all be seen on the website Dara made. So feast your eyes upon the product of a mad genius, scientist genius. Okay, let me quickly see if I can look at all of these tips. It's, I thought it's in here somewhere. It's in under tips. Oh, geez. This is so many things that we have not read. Uh, and they're out of order. Too interesting. Okay, I think we'll just read those future gadgets and then we'll we'll leave this because this is a lot of stuff. Uh, it's Ghost in the Ball, a gadget created by arranging 12 6-inch CRT monitors in a sphere. Small CMOS cameras are installed in the gaps between the monitors, each connected to the monitor on the opposite side of the sphere. This attempts at practical optical camouflage is the greatest masterpiece among the completed future gadgets, but the sheer size makes it difficult to store. Its name is derived from the sci-fi manga Ghost in the Husk, which has an anime adaptation. Future Gadget 6, a red chemical glow stick with a handle attached, allowing one to grip it like a sword. Made possible not just with Future Gadget laboratory hardware, but with chemical knowledge. Inspired by Spark Wars, a series of epic sci-fi movies. Gadget number 5, created by combining a dryer and a vacuum. The dryer is Operated using the exhaust of the vacuum. Its name is referenced to the popular anime Lupants the Third. <laughs> oh, this is great. Maybe I do have to read all of these at some point. Future Gadget 4. An instant super humidifier. Uses electric heating coils to quickly boil a large volume of water. This generates enough steam to fill a room of 12 square meters. Though it can only be operated continuously for a few seconds. It looks like a Claymore landmine, which appeals to military otaku. Its name is a reference to the stealth action game Metal Moa Solid Rising. Gadget number three. A lie detector based on thumb perspiration. Though it might be more appropriate to call it a sweat detector. You have to admit, it's a pretty clever invention. Its name is a reference to the classic manga Juju's Bizarre Adventure. Gadget 2, a CCD camera mounted to a bamboo toy helicopter. The cameras attach the helicopter's fulcrum, allowing it to record aerial footage unpowered. However, the image is rotating at high speed. Hey, Nightlife Games, how's it going? However, the image is rotating at high speed, so you might get dizzy if you keep looking at it. Its name originates from the sci-fi manga 22 Emon. This was, was this the first one? Yeah. And the first gadget, the very first future gadget, a toy ray gun with a TV remote jammed inside. You can change channels by pointing it at the TV and pulling the trigger. However, the only supported button is channel plus. No other buttons like volume are usable. To turn the TV on, you must manually flip the switch on the TV. Its, reference is, its name is a reference to the classic Japanese robot anime, Mobile Jacket Gun Bam. Wow, those are all great. There's a lot of things here. We'll probably have to go through them at some point. If they're... Uh, I'm just quickly looking at a couple of them. Uh, I mean, some of these other ones are actually, I think, supposed to be informative. Yeah. So those ones were, were funny. The other ones are a bit more informative, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, our current problem is feature gadget number 8, the Phone Wave, name subject to change. Phone Wave is a pretty weak name, so I've added name subject to change to the end until we come up with something better. For the record, it was Mayuri's idea, not mine. When a future gadget is completed, the three of us discuss what to name it. I prefer names based on mythology, or names with hidden meanings that need extra explanation to understand. Evening, Sir Bubba Man. How goes it for you? Dara thinks my naming style too ridiculous. He just doesn't have a passion for words like I do. 
Mayuri can't be bothered to remember difficult names. She says they don't fit in her head. And so our opinions on gadget names are always split. But I digress. The phone wave, name subject to change, is, in short, a remote-controlled microwave. You put food in the microwave before you leave, then on your way back, you call the attached cell phone to start the heating process. Voila! Hot food ready for your arrival. So it's basically a piece of junk. A few days ago, however, we discovered that the phone wave, name subject to change, has a second unintended capability. Our brave, or possibly just ditzy, Mayuri had made it her daily routine to heat some frozen fried chicken by remote control. Long story short, she was defrosting her beloved juicy chicken number one, as usual, when the unexpected happened. The chicken came out more frozen than when she'd put it in. The microwave refroze the chicken. Since then, Daru and I have been searching for the cause. Daru, now looking completely fed up with the heat, starts fanning himself with his shirt. I know what he means by really weird. Let's see if we can't make it happen again. Hey, Chaos. Welcome back. Doing swell, busy weekend, but going pretty good. How am I? I am doing well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> am I craving stuff before you get there is important. I agree with you, Mim. That would be an awesome thing, actually. It's almost like having um, one of those like crock pots that you can like set a timer on so it starts like an hour before you get home. That's what's bugging you? I take the bananas from my Yuri and stick the whole bunch into the phone wave, name subject to change. ケチケチしていては、機関との戦いに勝利することなどできんぞ。勝たなくてもいいよ。あのね、バナナはマユシーが買ってきてるんだからね。おかげでマユシーはちっともバナナが食べられません。次からは一本ずつ使うことも検討
Make the AI speak louder. Uh, let me see what I can do for you there, Mim. Uh, where's options? Let's see if that does it. You're joking? <laughs> okay, I'll leave I'll leave the volume as it is for now. Let me know if it's too loud now. Okay, so pound and then the number of seconds. Entering the command properly will cause the phone wave, name subject to change, to function like a normal microwave. Instead, we're going to deliberately mess up and enter 120 pound. Okay, cool. I wonder if I can mess up the mess up. <laughs> that should do it. This method was originally a simple mistake on Mayuri's part, but somehow started starts the freezing process. The phone wave, name subject to change, comes to life. The turntable begins to rotate. I never noticed that. Let's quickly look up what Hun's rule is. Does that say nine up on the cans behind the man? Uh, up on the can. Okay, I'll have to look, I guess, after he's gone. Let's quickly look at yeah, replacing seven up. Probably, that sounds like the kind of thing they would do. Uh, what was the one I was looking? I can't remember what it was. Uh, is Hun's rules something like that? There we go, found it. Uh, rule governing the placement of an atom's electrons. Orbitals of the same energy are each filled up with one electron of the same spin before any are filled with a second. Okay. Actual learning going on. Nine. So far. Yes, that does say nine up. <laughs> the three of us wait and stare at the spinning bananas and a can of nine up. After 120 seconds pass, the microwave chimes. Mayuri takes the bananas out. The bananas have become not bananas, gelatinous blobs coated with a thin membrane. After Mayuri discovered that the phone wave, name subject to change, had a freezing function, we attempted to freeze a bunch of bananas. This is what happened. Just gets more confusing each time. Yeah, I would not eat those nasty looking bananas. I mean, they look like they're radioactive. Wait, she already tried one? <laughs> Razorback, thank you for the host, my friend. Why, why don't we do it then? Um, it sounds like she already tried it, so we don't have to. Hello, Razor. How is it going? <laughs> 
いいから行ってみてくださいお願いします<笑>あなたのバナナブニュブ言わせるな手の額<笑> Uh, that's great. <laughs> Dara retreats after I hit him with the tissue box. Mayuri looks at us with an innocent smile. She doesn't get it, obviously. Anyway, I would like to take this time to point out that Daru is in university and Mayuri is in high school, which makes it even worse. <sighs> <laughs> It looks like Dard s blinked out of existence. Exactly, Mim. We could have partially liquefied the bananas. So I turn to the whiteboard and write freezing in the middle. Then I cross e d out and slap the board with my hand. Hey, Razor. Yes, this is my first time playing this. I have watched the anime, although it's been many, many years. Um, I probably watched this the year it came out, which I don't even know. I was back in university, so at least like six or seven years ago now, possibly longer. So there's a lot of parts that I don't quite remember. A bold statement, if I do say so myself, Cotton. So why isn't anyone surprised? So, my touch. Their reactions are pathetically weak. Although at least Daru's nosebleed is gone. Mayuri probably didn't even understand half of what I said. Oh. Yeah, I can give you a quick summary of the story so far.、Uh, so, our character uh, is uh, 18 years old in, in university with Daru, who is the character on the right with the orange hat. And on the left is Mayuri, who is our childhood friend. She's two years younger than us and in high school.、Um, our character is super obsessed with、uh, crazy inventions. Um, so, I don't even know if he knows exactly what this microwave is supposed to be in the end.、Uh, actually, I'm, I'm getting a bit off track. Let me go back to the start. We were at a conference、uh, where a、uh, doctor claims that he invented time travel.、Uh, we go to it,、uh, we discover that he is a fraud,、uh, that he's rehashing a theory、uh, that was used years previously. Uh, after we call him out, there is an American scientist called Krisu who、uh, drags us out and sort of confronts us about it.、Um, we recognize her from some Science Today magazine kind of thing.、Um, also, our character's kind of insane. He thinks he's being tracked by an evil organization that's trying to rule the world.、Um, We go, we go back to fetch Mayuri from the conference.、Uh, there's a loud noise. We find out、uh, Krisu is dead. We all run out of the building, and a giant satellite has crashed into the building. And no one seems to remember that we were like, just in it. All of like, the people around us disappear, and we think we're going crazy. And we came back to our secret laboratory, and we're. Now, working on one of our, our inventions, the、uh, phone microwave, name not yet finalized,、uh, which, if you call it and、uh, enter numbers like you would on like, your answering machine, enter,、uh, your like, voicemail,、uh, like entering your PIN number, it can automatically heat food for you. However, they discovered if you enter the code in reverse, it、uh, freezes food and then. They found another bug where it like, makes food gelatinous. So they just put some bananas in. They come out this weird, like, radioactive green, melted kind of color. And they're discussing what does that mean? What are we doing to the bananas? 
I hope that made sense. I feel like I missed lots of things and jumped around. Hopefully that was a good enough summary. He's right. To be honest, I haven't a clue. In any case, there's nothing we can do about it now. It's time for Daru and I to head to Daibiru. There's going to be a seminar at ATF, and we have to be there. It's part of our studies at Tokyo Denkai University. Summer credits, basically. We have to attend the seminar and write a report. Come to think of it, what's today's seminar about again? My voice is really smooth. Thank you for that, Razor. <laughs> I'm sure like most people, I hear my voice. I think it sounds horrible, but I'm glad <laughs> you think it is really smooth. I looked it up before the summer holiday began. Should have it written down. Thank you, Bubba. And Mim. You wish you could combine my voice with your own and we'd be unstoppable. Well, <laughs> what would we take over, Mim, with our combined voice powers? As we cross the overpass that connects UPX and Daibiru, I look down to see a huge crowd of people moving through the plaza. Jessica Jones? That's not how it works, Mim, unless you do a duet. Uh, I mean, we could ask. <laughs> if if we took the, um, the pieces you and I did for um, the birthday song, we could mash them together and have a duet. Can we actually try and do a duet? I mean, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> we can discuss it, I guess, tomorrow? We can maybe see if we can get it on stream. Or even better, make that a channel reward point. There you go. Oh gosh, if we add Fire Swamp into that. There are even some garishly dressed young men and women, the sort you don't usually see around Akiba. Twitch sings. <laughs> Ooh, we've got mail. Can I actually look at my phone? Yes, I can. Okay. So I think I can choose to ignore this message if I want. But why would we? So Mayuri sent us a message. You know, I'm really sad about dropping my upa. It's worse than last year when I missed buying Fatty Garo Frog. Ooh, these are links. Can I click on them? Ooh, I can reply about specific things. That's interesting. So looking at this, Garo Froggy to me is just sort of like a a side note. The real question in our heads right now is, did that first bit happen with the Upa? So asking about that to me makes helps us figure out if our memories are in fact valid. So I'm going to go with that. <laughs> I feel your pain. That thing was worth a fortune. Our precious research funds. Ors. <laughs> Can I go back and choose the other one? That was the one from last year, right? Thought you weren't interested. Okay, so I, it's actually nice that I can see what both text messages are before replying. <laughs> what is a fat Caro Froggy? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, in the first bit, there's this mascot from an anime called Upa, which we got from... Uh, a, like, um, 
one of those uh, machines where you put in money, you spin it, and you get like a, a toy in a ball, a gachapon. Um, and she lost it, and apparently Garo Froggy was um, the like in one of those from the previous year. Yeah. So looking at these two, this one actually. I feel like makes me sound like a bit of a dick because I'm just talking about money. So I'm actually going to go with this one. Oh, I can't browse the internet. Can I call people? No, I cannot call people. Oh, I can change my wallpaper. Oh yeah, blood, fantastic. I mean, I think I like this one the best. Oh, my ringtone, fantastic. <laughs> Why the fatty part? I don't know, I guess people... <laughs> I guess people think it's cuter? So what does this sound like? Picking my ringtone, this is clearly the most important part of this game. Okay. It's nice and soothing. Can I play Snake? <laughs> I don't think this has games. Maybe if it would... I assume E is supposed to be Internet Explorer, but I don't have that functionality yet. I think I found the village more easygoing than easygoingness. Ooh. This sounds like Final Fantasy VII, I'm just about to enter the Mako reactor. Uh, it does not appear like my phone has any games. kind of like that one. This one's all in caps. It has to be good. Oh, it's it's actually their um their song put into like a <laughs> got any crepes. <laughs> oh, I I really like both of these. Uh, let me hear this one again. I'll start with this one. Oh, and I can... There we go. One is now my my mail. One is now my phone. Perfect. Okay. Ba back to actually playing this game. Oh, <laughs> Oh, so that's why he was staring at his phone earlier. I mean, that's what people do. They just stare at your phone. You have nothing else to talk about. Maybe he's got Snake. Dang it, Daru. We enter Daibiru and take the elevator to the fifth floor, ATF Assembly Hall. Wait. I'm looking at the floor directory. I can't see behind the, um, the date time of her phone. But we have 3rd, 4th, and 6th. 5th floor doesn't exist. Interesting. Oh, okay. The elevator moves slightly, so now we can see we have basement 1, 2, 3 for parking. 1st, 2nd floor, but 5th floor still doesn't exist. Unlike the lab... Dibiro's air conditioning. Yet another reason for our diligent participation in the seminar. Whoa! Okay. So I don't know if you saw that, but the number on the right side changed from 1 to 2 as the conversation was going off of. was going on. They actually redid the background for this scene for every single floor going up in this elevator. Clifford's mailman has no reason to be that thick. <laughs> 
I'm waiting to see if it goes up to the third floor after this. I won't give in that easily, even if no other lab members use name subject to change. I'll carry on until the day we decide its true name. There we go, it's third floor now! Haha! <laughs> The main character is so <laughs> We're bringing back the Gorth. <笑>そう、<笑><笑> Oh, we're up to the fourth floor. <laughs> so, at the very start of this conversation. And we're at the fifth floor. A chime signals our arrival on the fifth floor. The elevator doors open slowly. So we step out of the elevator. I bump into someone, because of course we do. I quickly grab the person's shoulders to keep them from falling. It's a girl, and I recognize her. <gasps> Impossible. Chills run down my spine. I stare at her face in disbelief. I saw this girl just three hours ago. Makise Krisu. Except she's still alive. Creasy frowns and tries to back away, but I don't let go of her shoulder. My grip tightens. Does my phone have a camera? Can I take it out and take a picture? No, I can't. <laughs> Great way to talk to someone you just bumped into. Yeah, I appreciate that, JC. Awkward zoom in. There isn't a single blood stain on her clothes, and they're the same one she was wearing when I found her. Only a serious wound could have produced that much blood. Yet, as far as I can tell, she's completely uninjured. <laughs> Creasy pushes me away. <laughs> he isn't gonna grab onto his zebra shoulder. <laughs> then she shoots me a wary gla glare. I realize that I'm gaping in disbelief. I appreciate the, the like depth of field, the different distance between the characters and us. Daru interrupts. Wait, there's something strange about what he just said. A week ago. Can I check my phone? Heck yes, I can. But I don't have any outgoings. Interesting. え、俺が何をバカだ。マキセクリスが殺されているのを見たのはほんの3時間前だぞ。ちょっと勝手に殺さないでくれますか私ピンピンしてますんで。そういえばあのメール変な感じだったな。So he got it a week ago, it was dated a week after he got it, which means today. Mirai 
違うがな確かにメールの日付は1週間後のえっと28あそっか28日だから今日じゃん Daru pulls out his phone and shows it to me. Oh, I was hoping you'd have like a really awesome anime background that he'd have to cycle through. He's right. The email is sent from my phone. He received it on July 21st, 12.56. But it was sent on July 28th at 12.54. It was split into three mails. Someone stab. <laughs> Bed, <laughs> Makize K, Risu, don't. Why did I send such a short message in three parts? She's trying to ghost him! <laughs> literally, if she's dead, she's literally ghosting us right now. I do recognize the content, though. But once again, my phone still doesn't have that. It only has the message from today. But I sent one mail, not three. There should be more text. Did Dar really get this a week ago? Suddenly, Chris was standing next to me, peering intently at the screen of Daru's phone. Alright, the email's not important. Well, maybe it is, but not right now. <laughs> You're glad I caught it. <laughs> the real question is why she's still alive. To ghost us, of course. We've already established this. Is she an illusion? No. An evil spirit? Am I haunted? Yes, yes you are. I don't believe in such unscientific drivel. I am a mad scientist. We only believe the truth. What are these, like, crazy zooms? I timidly reach out to Grisu's face. <laughs> My fingertips stroke her hair. Feels silky. Quite the cuticles. <laughs> Can confirm she's not a ghost. <laughs> we have we have s solved this with science. Unless we're also a ghost and ghosts can touch each other. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> I poke Chris's cheek with my finger. <laughs> Such softness. Dead bodies don't feel like this. Not that I've ever touched one. <laughs> We're gonna get slapped real hard and kicked into that elevator. Oi. Wait a minute. We already touched and I bumped into her coming out of the elevator. I even grabbed her shoulders before being pushed away. But I still doubted that she had substance. That's just proof of how confused I am. If she's alive, then what did I see back at Rodicon? What was that scream I heard? It's your favorite part, ma'am. We're about to get slapped. <laughs> Were they hallucinations? Just like that mass disappearance? I love right now that her, her necktie coming down kind of looks like blood coming out of her neck. Yeah, the weird zooms are freaking me out, <laughs> too. I'm waiting for them to, like, speed up and have, like, jump scare kind of ones. Knowing them, they would do that kind of thing. That's right, she was stabbed. Maybe she's just hiding her wounds. <laughs> this requires further gust. Please don't, like, poke at her shirt. Please don't take her shirt off. <laughs> Why? Why? I grab the hem of her blouse and slowly <laughs> lift it. All things considered, she's being kind of reasonable. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> I stare straight back at Krisu as she trembles with anger and lift her blouse a little higher. <laughs> 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 
She pushes my hand away. Luis chan no mei zerifu. Kita kore. What line? What reference are you making? Familiar of tennis and derivative. <laughs> Daru said something silly, but I ignore him and press Krisu. How are we pressing her? <laughs> yes, Switch closed her eyes. Twitch knows what it saw. <sighs> Krisu's face turns bright red. She firmly pulls her blouse down. <laughs> Earlier this afternoon, after Dr. Nakabachi's presentation, Someone killed Makize Krisu and left her in a pool of blood. Permaband said. <laughs> now, the one thing I know about this game is there is an ending that if I feel like we're going down, I may have to check because it's probably bannable. <laughs> we're nowhere near close to it, but... Let's hope it doesn't come to that. <laughs> I carefully explain everything that I saw. That's what I'm going to have to do with Twitch. Nakabachi? <laughs> Something's wrong. Our stories aren't matching. It's the same thing that happened right after I saw the mass disappearance. Mayuri's story didn't match mine. I need to know. Please tell me you don't need to know what's under her blouse. I can't do that again. Am I caught in some sinister plot? Is this another organization conspiracy? I have no profile anymore. <laughs> The stream will just get mysteriously cut off in like two minutes. That's how you'll know. <laughs> Looks like she finally understands I'm not lying. But I still don't understand why my memories don't match everyone else's. I doubt I can give her a good explanation. <laughs> Better get all my merch before it's all gone. <laughs> yeah, if I get banned, all that merch will go up and it'll just skyrocket in value. Just then, an older man steps out of the assembly hall. Makise-san, it's time to start. Krisu glances at me one more time, then sighs and heads towards the small conference room. Oh, you're talking about Dr. Disrespect? I got a shirt. Hopefully he didn't do some perverted stuff. That I look weird wearing his shirt with him on it. I... I did hear something earlier today. I didn't know who people were talking about. I came in like mid conversation about someone getting banned and everything getting deleted. I assume this was the same person. Ah, that. Daru follows after Krisu. Did she come to attend the lecture too? Strange. Why would the girl genius, Makize Krisu, need to attend a lecture like this? Okay, 
My guess was a bit off. The girl genius didn't come to attend the lecture. She should just kick us out of the lecture hall at this point, to be honest. They haven't released why. Interesting. I'm curious. I'll have to look this up later. Actually, I'm going to quickly type it into my phone right now just so I remember later. Doctor Disrespect Band. Okay, I have entered it in Google. I have misspelled band, but that's fine. I will know what I am looking at after this. Japan's famous girl genius, Makize Kurisu, had her thesis published at the tender age of 17. You're multitasking? You thankfully you remember the anime so far? <laughs> According to Daru, she turned 18 a few days ago, because he's a creep who would know that. I first heard about her when Daru pointed her out in a Gossip Magazine article. That's when he told me that she was going to be a guest at ATF. I'd forgotten all about it. The audience is pretty mixed. I that applause does not sound mixed. Does this applause just go on forever? Let's find out. It sounds like the applause is on a loop, so she can just get applause forever. That is definitely not mixed. It's mostly students like us, but there are also a couple of professors. And Chrissy just gave me a sharp look. What did I do? When I return her stare, she quickly averts her eyes. Hmm. I don't care if she's a genius or whatever, I still don't like her. The last video Doc made is sad, you can tell he's distraught, choking up. It's a video about nine minutes long. The part where he starts going down is around like the last two-ish minutes. I think he's a good comedic actor, good at games, but not a good person at all. Interesting. I know nothing about Doc, so I can't add anything to this conversation, but you are making me incredibly curious. Also, how long are these people going to clap for? She may have these people fooled with her timid girl act, but I learned at Roddy Khan how cunning and aggressive she really is. Even if her murder was some kind of hallucination, my judgment of her character is still correct. That's the longest applause I've ever heard in my life. More topics of time travel. <laughs> Dang it, where Samus is. This is his Phoenix Wright moment. <laughs> Her eyes actually move, but I wish they would look at us directly at the screen. Every member of the audience, not just Kurisu, is startled by my interruption. Perhaps I'm being slight, s just slightly rude here, but I'm not one to just sit and listen to some genius girl's drivel. He's broken terms of service multiple times, one by streaming in a bathroom. Yeah, okay. Time machine to make Sitting at my side, Daru throws me a small salute. ATF staff are approaching properly to kick me out. Can we get kicked out of two conferences in one day? <laughs> Alright, doesn't, doesn't like our grade for the summer course depend on writing a report for this, this speech? I guess we're failing summer school. <laughs> Perhaps I got too carried away. Well... <laughs> 
いいですよディスカッション形式の方が話も弾むでしょうし Thanks to her proposal, the event staff refrained from escorting me out. She sounds a little pissed, but let's not mind that. <laughs> Are we going to go through 11 models of time travel? <laughs> I don't mind if you guys talk about other streams in general. It's totally fine by me. It's, I'm incredibly curious by it. I've heard about the cosmic string theory, at least. Okay, we're going to go through the 11 theories of time travel. Take out your notebooks, everyone. Okay, there's all of them. If you need to, to take your notes, now is your time. <laughs> hmm, not bad. Perhaps Makise Kirisu is a worthy rival. She just listed things. She hasn't defended anything at this point in time. She's just listing theories. I quite enjoy this this music with its like industrial robotic kind of sound. Is the 12th way the gelatinous banana microwave way? It will be. We have not yet perfected the, the microwave time machine. This time she does look at us, yes! <laughs> Damn, she twisted my question and used it against me. Touché, genius girl. Suddenly, I feel the eyes on me. Except not a single character is looking at me, so no I don't. Some puffed up professors are giving me hard looks from across the room. Maybe I got too carried away. That's the second time you've said that in like the past minute. I don't want to risk losing my credits. I should back off for now. <laughs>例えば今すぐ羽田空港に行ってそこから沖縄行きあたりの飛行機に乗ればいい。目的地に降り立った時、その人は16分の1秒くらい私より未来に進んでいる。100 Naruto run is confirmed time travel. <laughs> She's calling us out. <laughs> Why are you singling me out? I wonder why. I'm doing my best to, to hold back, but it looks like Makise Kirisu wants to pick a fight. I wish that she hadn't said that name in front of so many people. These these are your classmates, are they not? I mean, I would expect some of them to know you. Except maybe that we're just too mad to know anyone here. It's too great of a risk to let others know my true name. Now a professor calmly makes an objection. 
true, Akise Krisu's example isn't strictly time travel, per se. I never expected an older man, a professor at that, to refute an 18-year-old girl. Maybe he's just testing the genius girl's resilience. The genius girl readily concedes the point. If she were a normal 18-year-old girl, it would be impossible for her to be this calm in front of all these people. A normal 18-year-old would panic when refuted by such a distinguished-looking professor. And yet... Kize Krisu's giving off an aura of gutsiness that says, I can take this guy on. This time, it's a nearby student who objects. It's just me, but Chris, you look a little nervous just now. <laughs>例えば実際に皆さんが体ごと過去や未来へ行くことができるようなタイムマシンを作るにはまず何が必要か考えてみましょう。代表的なところだと宇宙紐理論かワームホール理論かな。宇宙紐というのは超巨大な質
Like that's even possible. And why the hell is she addressing me? I wasn't even the one who jeered this time. <laughs> She's still asking us. No, don't ask me. I'm trying to hold back here. Since I've been challenged, though, I can't leave the question unanswered. I got it right. I sigh inwardly in relief. Cool, so this is what the inside of your old speakers looks like. だけど、ここで残念なお知らせ。ワームホールのトンネルは超重力がかかっていて、開通すると同時に潰れちゃいます。だから、かかる重力を無効化するために何らかの最高しなくちゃダメなの。いわゆる液状蓄物質。これはマ
光並みの速さで宇宙の果てまで往復させることのできるエネルギーその3エキゾチック物質ちなみにこれ実在は確認されてません So, implementation of either one would require a ridiculous amount of effort. So, you just spent like 40 minutes telling us why time travel is impossible, and、uh, let's see if we can do it. So, <laughs> 例えば机の引き出しを開けるだけで使えるものとか。Something you can pull out of a drawer and just use? <laughs> ないですね。A、firm declaration. 結局、現代の物理学じゃそこが限界。10年後にはどうなってるかわかりませんが。それに、仮にもっと簡単に過去へ行ける方法が発見されたとしても、実際に行けるとは限らない。因果率に関する根本的な問題が解決されていませんからタイムパラドックス質量保存の法則 Mass of the entire universe is constant If a time machine traveled from the future to the past there would be suddenly an extra mass of the time machine and the pilot in the past I remember reading it in a book not a terribly reputable book but still That such a violation of mass conservation would put the universe in danger. It didn't say what kind of danger, though. What? Is that true? <laughs> She's laughing at my reaction. That little. How mortifying. Areva, Kagaku Hano, and I see the whole so this can I cut. Gain thy good three got a new item, a matak said it's she night. Mukara, you are, you need a semascara. That's pretty amazing. There are none in a Monday to not in no cane. Time paradox or time paradox demo. Oyagoros no paradox no hodes. Uh, that thing where you kill your own ancestors before you were born. Time paradox is wonderful. Really? It doesn't seem that dangerous. I'm sure you'll tell us why it's wrong. パラドックスは非論上の思考実験に過ぎない。現実に起きることはないし、起きてはいけないことなんです。だから、たとえ0.0001%でも起きる可能性のあるどんな行動も絶対に実行には移せない。そう考える方が自然じゃないですか多世界解,解釈や自己無矛盾の原理っていう抜け道もありますが個人的にはファンタジーすぎると思うので認めたくないですね。はがく Apparently we're choking on our water back here. I grind my teeth. When I see Makise Krisu looking at me with her composed expression, I avert my eyes. Looks like I have no, ch no choice but to concede. He's a Chris who truly is a genius. I ended up listening to all of Chris's lectures at ATF. After the two time travel theories she introduced at the beginning, she explained the rest with equal eloquence. She seemed a little nervous at first, but that quickly changed as she spoke. By the end, it was an impressive lecture. <laughs> yes, no dur, she's a genius. So impressive, you wouldn't think it was an 18 year old's first time. That can be taken way out of context. She did well to respond to my malicious questions with sarcasm. She's got guts. Wait, why am I praising her? 
leaving that aside, I saw Makise Krisu dead, and yet she's alive. My memories don't mesh with reality. And not just about Krisu, my conversations with Daru and Mayuri don't make sense e didn't make sense either. Everything would be solved if I just told myself that what I saw was a dream, an illusion, that it never happened. But never say never. This leaves me with no choice. After parting ways with Daru at ATF, I headed to Yanabayashi Shrine. I needed to get exercised. <laughs> I seriously doubt the Makise Krisu at ATF was a ghost. Regardless, it's natural to seek an exorcism after such an experience. I'm Japanese, it's in our blood. Yanabayashi Shrine is located on the other side of Kanda River. To find it, enter the first side road after crossing Monsebashi Bridge. It's a very small shrine that doesn't fit with the surrounding multi-tenant buildings. Kanda Myojin is the more famous shrine in Akiba, but I deliberately chose this one. The shrine is so small, you could easily miss it if you weren't looking. Regardless, I can hear the chirping of cicadas from the few trees growing here. There are two girls standing in front of the main building. One of them is Mayuri. The other is a docile looking beauty in traditional Miko attire. <laughs> yes, best girl, Mim. Rushibara Luka. A stunning example of feminine charm and grace. Lips delicate like cherry blossoms in bloom. The essence of Japanese beauty. The chief priest's son. <laughs> His best girl. That's right, son. Lovely in every way, but he's a guy. He bows his head. The voice of a girl, the mannerisms of girl. More feminine than any girl I know. But he's a guy. <laughs> that seems fantastic. <laughs> Uh, taller than Mayuri, yet oh so slender. But he's a guy. <laughs> Looks stunning in Miko robes. But he's a guy. <sighs> Holding a bamboo broom, apparently in the middle of cleaning. But he's a guy. <sighs> it's almost evening, it's still hot as hell outside. But he's a guy. <laughs> These don't even make sense anymore. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. And Tam Cicadas won't shut up. But he's a guy. <laughs> uh, this is great. <laughs> he's a friend of mine. I call him Lukako. We met when I rescued him from some aggressive photographers in Akiba's pedestrian heaven. It also happens that Lukako and Mayuri are classmates. I learned that fact after I'd gotten to know him. Lukako is taken aback by my sharp question. He starts fidgeting with a flushed face and tears in his eyes. あ、<笑><笑> Thank you for the Fallic panic switch. <laughs> Dang it, Memory, you can respond to everything with, but he's a guy. <laughs> I ignore Mayuri's question. Yes. <laughs> 
1日1回は素振りをあれを持ち精神残魔流を極めさえすればお前は己の内にある邪悪な炎に焼かれずに済む Demon sword Samidare may be an imitation sword but that is the only form it takes to hide but that is only the form it takes to hide from the world When one worthy to wield it appears, it unleashes its true power. And it was on sale for only 98 yen, tax included. I wouldn't respond to everything, but it should be noted. He's a guy. Thank you, Mim. That wasn't clear to me before, but it is now. Lukako smiles happily as I nod. But he's a guy. <laughs> Such a lovely smile. <laughs> But he's a guy! <laughs> We jumped the gun just a little too, too quickly. She's getting a little excited. Jeez. <sighs> uh, <laughs> Though we do have a master disciple relationship, I, Hyo, and Kiyoma have gone to great lengths to brainwash her, I mean, teach. Important difference Lukako about the evil conspiracies that rule the world and how to resist them. That stuff about Demon Sword. Semidari is part of that training. Looks aside, Lukako is very obedient and hardworking. Plus, he's always eager to learn new things. A master couldn't ask for a better disciple. Though he does have the weakness of not catching on too quickly and being too shy. So, why is Mayuri here? Lukako has come to meet him! For the next year, Uh, I want to look up what Kirari Chan is. I... Of course, the heroine. She's a smart, athletic girl in grade 5. Basically, the perfect girl. But he's a guy. <sighs> Someone this cute can't be a girl. Wonderful. Perfect. Uh... Mary's hobby is making costumes. She's made at least 30 so far. It's rare for her to wear one herself. Instead, she seems to get her kicks from seeing other people wear them. It looks like she's chosen Lukako as her next target. Naturally, the costume Mayuri is currently raving about is, a is for a female character. Normally, I wouldn't understand why a man wouldn't want to dress like a girl, but come on! Lukako has no problem wearing Miko robes. Why should cosplay be any different? But whatever, I have business to take care of. Eh? 
俺がこの神社を訪ねたのは他でもないお祓いを頼みたいのだがやってもらえないだろうかお祓いですかだったらお父さんにあいやそこまで大げさにしなくていい気休めでいいのだ That's why I came here instead of Kanda Shrine. So you w a k e d it. Lay no auto mot de goy. Lay no auto y m s t o The usual. Sammy d o r e t s c o l e t see that. Oh, had I any yoto was still an idol. Oh, had I to eat an are any k i m a t i r Sejkina may show a bakranga. ボニー白い髪がふさふさとついていて、彼氏がわさわさと振るやつだ。<笑>今のオカリンの説明、ゆとりっぽい。<笑> that <sounds> really、dumb. <笑> Quite a shock to hear that from my Yuri. <笑>あ、おほぬさですね。でも、お父さん、貸してくれるかな。ちょっと、聞いてきます。Lukako makes a quick bow, then runs off towards his house, which is on the shrine grounds. Meanwhile, Mayuri takes her pocket watch out of her bag to check the time. It's a very old watch, not the sort you'd expect a high school girl to carry. Its name is Pockety. It's exactly what you'd expect a high school girl to name it. Obviously, that's the name Mayuri gave it, not its brand name or anything. Ever since elementary school, Mayuri has carried Pockety with her everywhere. It's her most important treasure. So, Gamba, the boy. Boy, to go water, took the car in the car. Larry lives in Ikebu Kuro. She comes to Akiba by train just about every day. Should be obvious since we're childhood friends now, but I live in Ikebu Kuro too. I've been staying at the lab since summer break began. I call Mayuri to stop before she trots off. Mayuri, Omae wa anotoki, Rajikan de Otoko no Hime o Kita ima. Hime? Mayuri blinks several times and puts her finger to, to her temple as if in thought. Then she gives her usual smile. <laughs> yes, yes, he is. Mayuri leaves, this time for good, though she pauses to wave at least a do half dozen times before disappearing beyond the archway. Lukako returns shortly after Mayuri leaves. His hands is the white zigzaggy thing I asked for. Lukako is flustered. Is he really up to this? I'm beginning to doubt. Should have known better. The instant doubt touches my heart, a terrible chill shoots up my spine. <laughs> I grab my violently shaking wrist.
Just like we taught him. With a serious look on his face, Lukako grasped the Onusa with both hands as if it were a sword. His stance is impressive. I've taught him well. His face is red and he can barely talk. Looks like he wants to say something, but is hesitating. Panicking because he feels awkward? Hm. Amateur. Lukako starts crying. Looks like he's really worried. Reason tells me he's a guy, but his lovely appearance makes me feel guilty. Like I made a frail girl cry. But despite the tears welling up in his eyes, it looks like Lukako has managed to work up his resolve. <laughs> Raises the Onusa pie, shaking it left and right. The tip of the Onusa touches my upper arm. In an anime, this would be the cue for something dr some dramatic shockwave to occur, but nothing like that happens. The only sound is the chirping of cicadas. I take a deep breath. The trembling in my arm has stopped. Lukako sighs in relief and blushes. His shy smile really does make him look like a girl. Okay, I think after that exorcism, I think I'm going to call it there. But yes, thank you to everyone who showed up to this. 